Welcome, CC Sola. Welcome back again to a Thursday night USC Bible study. Uh, we are so blessed to join you and for you to be here with us as well in one spirit of the Lord. And uh, again, for opening up your doors once again so that we can be all ministered to from the Word of God. Uh, so as we start, let's go ahead and open up in prayer as we go into song and praise. Father in heaven, we just come before you once more. We just thank you so much for all that you're doing in our lives and just uh, just using us for your will and your purposes, God. And we just want to remain obedient and faithful to you and your words, Lord God. And right now, Lord Father, God, as we go through the difficulties of life and the struggles that we're faced with and challenges, God, just help us to overcome it, Lord Father, God. And in this moment of time, Father, help, uh, help us, Lord Father, God, just uh, get right with you, Lord God, and let our hearts be open and our, our our minds be open to you right now father as you just illuminate it with your your truth your love and lord help us to just uh, lay aside any distractions that might be on our hearts and our mind right now so we can be focused upon you again we thank you and we love you in jesus name we pray this amen Your friend. 
God is good. Amen.
you're just amazing and wow lord your your love is is reckless that it's 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 in control it's so reckless that it's in control father god and lord there's nothing reckless about your love but the fact that that you love us so unconditionally Lord god that you've paid a way for us through your son jesus by dying on the cross for humanity and father god so that we can have an opportunity at eternal life for those who believe and those who choose to follow and seek you father god again we thank you lord we love you in jesus name we pray amen, amen. welcome church once again we do have a few announcements and if you guys are just starting uh we are in the book of john um so again it's quite a few announcements so please bear with me um so first and foremost uh prayer warriors uh 8 a.m saturday mornings uh, if you want more information and inquiry inquire about it you can always go to the welcome center wednesday evenings and sunday morning after the services uh, next we do have prayer meetings also in between services on sunday mornings um, so uh, if you want to be involved in that ministry as well, if you're not able to go on Saturdays, this is a perfect opportunity for you to go during the in-between services on Sunday. Also, the high school uh, youth ministry is also already going on as well. So if you have children within that age, um, we highly encourage you to um, send them forth there so they can get some um, discipleship and learn the Word of God. Moving forward, tomorrow, September the 18th, uh, is the marriage ministry and they will meet tomorrow at CC Sola at 7 p.m. So you married couples, please join in uh, so you can get the word of God and be fed and really grow your uh, marriage uh, that the Lord has built up. And uh, it's, it's an incredible ministry and uh, you'll definitely, definitely learn a lot through it um, in, that, um, in that ministry there. Moving forward, September 19th on Saturday uh, is also the food distribution drive uh, which will begin at 11 a.m. So again, don't be embarrassed. Don't be shy about going. The Lord is blessing the church so they can bless the community. And those who are in need, doesn't matter who you are, where you live, the food is there, the necessities are there for you to be blessed with. So please, if you have the opportunity time, come by or invite someone that you know that may have uh, these needs and they can be blessed as well. Um, so it's a great opportunity to um, minister to one another as well as fellowship. So again, that's going to be on Saturday, 11 a.m. Uh, moving forward, September 22nd and the 24th, uh, the School of Ministry will begin and they will be teaching on the Jesus Style Course and Calvary Distinctive. Uh, so if, again, if you want to get more information on that, you can join in um, on those dates and also get more information through the Welcome Center as well. Also, the men's iron sharpens iron every second and last Friday of the month. So you single men out there or married men, and you want to just get more discipleship uh, through godly men and leadership and those who are teaching uh, uh, during those uh, ministries, please join in so you can be fed as well. Uh, moving forward, um, Jan uh, excuse me, January, not January, September 26th is also the National Prayer of Repentance that the whole nation is uh, um, uh, being a part of and the pastor has uh, has been, it was put in his heart by the Lord to uh, partake in this time and that will be at 9 a.m. in the morning and also that coincides with the National Day of, of Repentance um, is also the Lord's Feast which is known as the Feast of Trumpets and it's a 10-day period of repentance and consecration unto the Lord uh, which can be found in Leviticus uh, chapter 23 of verse 24 and numbers chapter 29 verses 1 through 6 so we have the national day of prayer here in u.s and then we have the lord's feast from the bible and so we it's just two events just coincide together and it's an, it's, a, it's an amazing time to really just come before the lord humble yourself repent of sin evaluate your hearts and turn back to the lord so again, moving forward also the fearless women's retreat it's coming up uh, february i'm sorry November the 14th that's gonna be at CC Sola as well six sixty five dollars three meals it's an all-day event but you will be blessed with the Word of God so uh, you ladies that are out there um, if you can put aside some money for it and also 
um, put your request in for the day off so that way you have it in advance and you have enough time for your work to figure out their schedule so that you can attend and be blessed by the word. Uh, moving forward, the spiritual self-defense ministry uh, that will be for the teenagers and the young adults that will be on Fridays from 7 to 9 p.m. and it covers apologetic material uh, so that your youth and your young ones can learn how to defend their faith in the, wor in the Word of God and especially being in this world, in this secular world where evil is just continue to, continually rapidly growing and your, your children and this next generation of the youth, uh, it's so vital and important that they learn and know how to defend the Word of God and understand it so they too can minister, defend, evangelize. And so the youth of today is highly influential so i encourage you to sign up your uh, your children or and those who fit within that age range so that they too uh, can be discipled as well um, the children's ministry is also looking for servants so again if the lord has been put in your heart to serve there uh, please fill out an application and you can uh, obtain that at the welcome center also the one step to freedom ministry has uh, uh, has started already since last week um, so it's every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And also baptisms for those who got baptized recently. Uh, if you're wanting to get your certificate, um, you can inquire at the Welcome Center so they can go ahead and get that up for you. Um, moving forward, regular services, of course, Wednesday, 7 p.m., Sundays, 9, 11, and 6 p.m. in the evening. Uh, all, of course, will be live streamed. Uh, for those who are unable to attend, you could always watch it online. But there's nothing like coming in person and fellowshipping and hearing the word of God in person. Uh, moving forward, let's go ahead and open up in prayer for the tithes and offering. And Father God, once more, we just thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. And Lord, we just want to give back to you uh, what you've given us and what you've uh, given stewardship to us over and responsibility over, Father. And that we just use what we have to honor and glorify you and Lord, I pray that you would multiply, grow it for your kingdom, for your purposes, uh, to uh, spread the word of God, the gospel. And Father God, again, we thank you, Lord. That we do it in love, not obligation or by force, Lord God, because we love you, Lord. We thank you. We love you in Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Oh 
life In my life Be lifted high In our world Be lifted high In our love Be lifted high and everyone else, Father God, you came to us, Lord God. You came down from your humble abode in heaven, your glory of glory, Lord, your heavenly abode, Lord God, and to rescue us on a, on a rescue mission, Father God. And Lord, you didn't have to, Lord, but you chose to because you love us. And Father God, it's just beyond comprehension why you chose to do so, and we're just beyond grateful for it, Lord Father God. For you are infinite, Father God, so glorious, Lord, and we thank you, Father God, that we are able to give what we can to you, Lord, in love and worship and obedience, God. In Jesus' name we pray this, amen. Well, thank you again, church, Thursday nights, for joining us this evening. Uh, so... As we begin again, we are still in the book of John chapter 6. Uh, so for those of you who are just joining us this evening, uh, we are um, John chapter 6. Uh, let me get it here one second. Verses um, 41 to 46. And last week we were in John chapter 6. Verses 35 to 40. So for those of you who are just joining us this evening and didn't catch us last week, uh, we'll go through a quick recap of last week's study so that everyone can be on the same page, can be uh, following up into uh, what we're getting into the study so that nobody is left behind and questioning what happened before. So we're going to do our best so that we can uh, be ministered to through the Holy Spirit. So again, last week's study was in John chapter 6, verses 35 to to 40 and the title of that message last week was words to the people part two so here in uh, john chapter 6 35 to verse 40 of last week jesus once again declares and proclaims a very bold truth about his divine nature he cuts through their selfish hearts okay and interjects such a profound truth that it irritates them so much because of the conviction and then the Lord continues to give us this truth about salvation and found only through Jesus himself alone. See, he explains to them that he is the bread of life. He is the living water that never runs dry. And those who believe in him will have everlasting life. And Jesus was extremely clear about that. The Messiah Jesus has revealed his truths to the people among him, the multitudes, the crowds, and those who were presently there. Yet, they still chose to defy his truths and words to seek after their personal desires. See, a selfish and hardened heart will always resist God's ways. There was this attitude of, I want it now expectation and they just could not see past their selfishness. See, we should never take for granted God's words and what he has already established. 
when we follow our heart's desires, then it will always conflict with God's heart and we will never have true fulfillment or satisfaction. Now moving forward to tonight's study, John chapter 6 verses 41 to 46, and the title of tonight's message is Words to the Jews part 1. So if we can all stand together and perfect this time that I'm able to stand with you guys since I'm already standing. So let's go ahead and read that together. So again, if you're just joining in, John chapter 6, verses 41 to 46. You could also see that in the title of the video. And when you're, uh, you're done, if you miss it, you can always rewind the video later on to uh, get all the verses and all the information. Uh, verse 41 says, Therefore the Jews were grumbling about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down out of heaven. They were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does, he, how does he now say, I have come down out of heaven? Verse 30, 43. Jesus answered and said to them, Do not grumble among yourselves. Verse 44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 45 says, it is written in the prophets, and they shall be, and they shall all be taught of God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. 46. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. And once again, Father, we just thank you so much for your word and the opportunity that we have that we can study it, have it with us. and. Your, your, your words are so precious to our hearts and to us, Father God. And Lord, let us not take, it, take for granted your word, Lord, as those who have in the past and in generations, Father God. And we have brothers and sisters all over the world who are being persecuted and going through trials and tribulations for the cost of Christ and your word, Father God. And we just pray for them as well, Lord God, because they're, they're eager and they're wanting and they're dying for the word, Father God. And we have it so blessed here, God. Lord, just speak to our hearts now and illuminate our minds, our hearts, so that we may understand from you and that we can continue to grow in our walk with you in a deeper, profound manner. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. So, moving forward, again, we are in... John chapter 6, 41 to 46. So what are the key points of these verses that we're studying? The main understandings, right? So point one, Jesus continually proclaims. He speaks a truth and it begins to upset the Jews, right? They're becoming angry in their flesh. They're starting to quarrel among, amongst each other. They're starting to argue and who knows what they're trying to incite, maybe a, a, a riot or something. There's a lot of people there and just imagine what it could be like the energy, the environment, you know, the hostility among the people there as they continue to hear this truth from the Lord. You know, it could be a, a, an incredible amount of conviction upon their hearts just hearing what they are hearing. So they are completely upset. Their hardened hearts and selfish desires are not being met with their satisfaction because they keep asking for a miracle but the Lord just keeps telling them look it's beyond the miracle it's the meaning behind it not just the physical miracle or the blessing of it there is a message behind it and they're choosing to ignore that because they want what they want right so they begin to question they begin to quarrel amongst each other again about Jesus's authority and his statements so here Jesus, he, he stirred up their hearts with truth that led to conviction. And it even questioned their own personal understandings. See, the Lord's truths will always provoke our hearts and minds to godly righteousness. And when we recognize and acknowledge that, we are to act responsibly by either responding with a godly approach or we end up resisting it because of our fleshly desires. 
See, the words of God cut deep into our souls so that we can discern the heart of God and sin. Just like it says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, and it says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joint and, joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. See, many of these Jews were conflicted within their hearts because they were torn between the truths proclaimed by Jesus and from their own personal understandings and perspectives that they have developed over the many, many years. They could not humble themselves to the truth of God's words, especially if it's manifested right in front of them, speaking physically to them. Moving forward, God's truth always prevails. See, because our personal perspectives have no authority because we have no divine attributes like the Lord. See, resisting the word of God and his truths will only continue to expose the evil, stubbornness, and rebelliousness of man's heart. There's no escaping the reality of facing the truth. It commands our response to either believe, follow, and obey, or again, to resist and face horrific consequences. We will reap what we sow. It's very sad today, and it's very sad today to say that both believers and unbelievers face that today. When truth hits us in the face or convicts our hearts, many of us will resist or even suppress it so that we can continue feeding our fleshly desires. Even when the Lord does something dramatic or even drastic, the person still ignores it. So what must the Lord do or even allow in order for the person to be humbled or to humble themselves. Just as it says in Matthew 23, 12, and it says, whoever exalts himself shall be humbled and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. So I do hope and pray that we are not so stubborn in our ways that the Lord has to humble us because being humbled by the Lord is painful. And the process of recovery and restoration can be very timely. Moving forward, as we go into the interpretation and get some cross-references. So, as we go to verse 41, and it says, Therefore the Jews were grumbling about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down out of heaven. So here, as Jesus continues to speak truth to the crowds the jews among them or in other translations use the word judeans because these people were of jewish culture ethnicity and they resided they lived in the area or in the surrounding areas so these jews were speaking out from within the crowd and these crowds and multitudes were a mix of people of both jews and gentiles so when they were grumbling the word grumbling in the greek is Gongutso, gongutso, which means murmuring, a type of complaining in a low tone or under your breath. And I know many of us do that all the time. At work, in your marriage, when someone tells you something, you're like, Ugh. you say something under your breath, under your tone, and sometimes they'll, if they can hear you, they'll ask, what did you say? Oh, nothing. You know, and then you just turn around and you still speak under your, under your breath. We're all guilty of that. I, I myself. You know, and just, just let's be straight. We all do it, plain and simple. And it's no different with these people. They were doing the same thing, but they were even more vocal about it because they were speaking to the Messiah. And Jesus can see their hearts. He can see their souls right through them. So what they were going through is no different than what we go through today. So in other words... They had a negative attitude towards Jesus and they were complaining amongst themselves. All they did was complain. And, you know, the reality is we complain just as much too. So nothing's changed. There is an undertone of disgust in their behaviors. There was a lack of respect 
but more importantly, a blatant and an intentional misunderstanding of Jesus. See, rather than listening and having a respectful conversation with Jesus to gain clarification from what he was saying so they can understand what he's saying, instead, they were just consumed with their selfish intentions. They didn't care. They just, no, I, we want what we want. We want, we want free food. We want more miracles. Uh, continue to prove yourself as the, the son of God. And you know, how many more miracles did Jesus have to do to prove? It doesn't matter how many he did. They were still continue to ask for more. You know, because of how hard in their hearts were and how so involved they were in their selfish ways. Just as I mentioned earlier, unfortunately, many of us within the church body still try and justify our selfish ambitions while trying to do the will of God. You just can't do both at the same time. You can't prioritize both. If you side with one, the other one is, will be lacking. So it's either you have the door first in front and your personal desires and wants in the back. It, it, it's a tug of war. You can't have both unfortunately. So we have to submit to the Lord and that requires a full surrender of ourselves and our lives to be fully devoted to Him and His will for us. When we approach God with a hidden agenda, meaning when we want to still fulfill our personal agendas or goals, we are pretty much telling God to hold off and hold on because we still want to chase our dreams. And that you want God to even approve of those dreams of yours and your desires. We simply can't have it both ways, brothers and sisters. But see, God's will will not compete with our desires. Because His will will always override it regardless of what you say, what you do, what you think. God is almighty. He's sovereign. Okay, He knows past, present, and future. There's just nothing you can do to stop his will from being done and again but if you do so and you choose to defy you choose to rebel in that manner you will miss out on the blessings that God has if you are willingly choosing to not prioritize his will in your life you're just not going to see the blessings you're going to be filled with turmoil stress you're just going to be in, in a place of uh, sadness and unfulfillment because you think you can do things your way but still have God in your back pocket. It just does not work out that way at all. So moving forward, these Jews, again, or Judeans, were still upset about the spiritual meaning even after Jesus explained it. So instead of, again, trying to reason and understand it, they just continued to disqualify and discredit the truths that Jesus spoke of. At this point, it seems as if they are just mocking him and implying that he is ignorant of what he speaks of. So now they're just coming up with insults because they have nothing else to say. They're complaining again, blinded them from seeing the truth. And were only fixated on personal advantages. And if they couldn't get what they wanted, then they would find any excuse just to ridicule him instead. They had a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to meet the Messiah, and they messed it up, unfortunately. Now, we as believers of today only have the Word of God with us, but we will see the Messiah, Jesus, one day, very soon in the future. So let's not take it for granted, again, what we have been given. We are so blessed to believe when we have not seen Him yet. Just as it says in John 20, 29, Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. So how blessed are we to believe in the Lord that we have not seen yet physically, and yet those four, uh, people in, in, in history had every opportunity with the Lord and they just completely blew it. Completely blew it. So... We should not be in that same attitude and manner of just taking it for granted. It's, it's a shame if we do so. Moving forward, verse 42 says, They were saying, is, that, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? 
How does he now say, I have come down out of heaven? See, these people still continue to interrogate Jesus for his claims. And now they're seemingly filled with irritation because they felt his claims were absurd and self-glorifying. Again, rather than questioning with the intent to understand the truths of Jesus, they initiate their assumptions and accusations with hostility towards Jesus. See, Jesus proclaimed a statement that he came down from heaven six times, six times, to further prove of his heavenly and divine origin. He's not just a mere man, but the God-man. They claim to know Jesus and his background by announcing it to everyone and to his face as if they could embarrass Jesus for his claims and as if they, could, and as if they were the ones who could validate his identity. But of course, they only knew so little based upon what they have heard. So how arrogant, how arrogant is it when we have this know-it-all attitude? Right When we have this super Christian attitude Only to be proven wrong And then our egos get hurt And we find some way to justify our reasoning So why not save ourselves from the grief And embarrassment And just humble ourselves before the Lord It's that easy It's that easy So these people may have even felt offended Through conviction because of the truth that they heard. So they immediately dismiss him as being just another man. Now let's go at, look at a few cross-references. The first cross-reference we can look at is Luke 4, 22, and it says, all were speaking well of him and wondering at the gracious words which were falling from his lips. And they were saying, is this not Joseph's son? So here Jesus was speaking in the synagogue and teaching from the book of Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 and 2 and those who heard the teaching of Jesus were astonished they were amazed about his explanations and the authority that he had when he was preaching and teaching see these people in the synagogue who were there either questioned or commented with an irritated attitude again because Jesus spoke with such truth and they even marveled, or they even marveled with respect to Jesus. So either, either or, either they were for him or against him. And they would either agree or follow or just completely disagree. So you had two, two sets of people there, conflicting probably within each other there in the synagogues. But what they all can come in agreement to is when they heard the authority from, from the Lord, it was something that they've never heard before. That's how much he commanded, his, 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 how his authority was commanded. He had command presence, as they say in the military. Such strong authority that they were just in amazement of him. The next cross-reference we can look at is Mark chapter 6, verse 3, and it says, Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense to him. So in the book of Mark, he describes further details in regards to Jesus teaching in the synagogue. And here the people are in shock that Jesus has such wisdom and divine attributes that they quarrel amongst each other again and become more irritated and that's how they become offended. Instead of glorifying the Lord and God and realizing the truth proclaimed, and asking the proper questions so they can understand more, they choose to become angry instead and even jealous of Jesus. They react in such a way that they are threatened by a man who knows such things. And especially because he comes from a poor upbringing, according to their claims. So to them, they're even more insulted because, they, wow, this Jesus came from here. He's from the. How does he know these things? Because they don't understand and they're choosing not to understand they're jumping the gun as they say jumping to conclusions without understanding the truth that's in front of them first see man regarding us humans are always trying to find an excuse to ignore biblical truth in order to again justify our own, our own agendas emotions or even our perspectives see god's words always prevail 
and will even cut deep into our hearts and soul in such a profound way. Verse 43 says, Jesus answered and said to them, do not grumble among yourselves. So here Jesus is only, is only calling out what he already knows because he sees their hearts. But more importantly, he exposes their hearts and then he openly rebukes them because of their wicked hearts. Jesus even does this so that the people can realize their ill-mannered attitudes and how they are approaching this matter. See, these people were expressing such discontent. In other words, an attitude of opposition towards Jesus. Eventually, they built up hate inside themselves towards Jesus. See, this was a common bad behavior of grumbling. We've seen that multiple times in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament. We can go to Exodus chapter 15, verse 24, chapter 17, verses 4, and Numbers 14, 2, when the children of Israel were grumbling in the same manner. See, in both instances, these people missed the fundamental meaning behind what God said in the Old Testament and what Jesus said. And both God and Jesus proclaimed the same exact truths. They didn't say anything different. They spoke the same things. And yet the people still complained in the same manner once again. Verse 44. And it says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. So once again, Jesus repeats himself, as he did in the previous verses, to further drown out their complaints with bold truths. Excuse me. He re-emphasizes a truth in which the people want to debate with Jesus. And what more than replying back with the same answer? His proclamation of divine truth and that Jesus is the divine one, who is the key to eternal life. See, Jesus is ensuring them once again that he has established eternal security for those who believe and trust in him alone and will raise them to eternal life at the end of age. So even in their disagreements with Jesus, he still, he still lovingly poses this truth to them. No matter how much backlash Jesus experiences and gets, he still remains firm and unwavered in the truth. This goes to show that no man or creation can stand against God's truths. It will be utterly shut down and God will always have his way. No question about that. See, one way or another we will hear the truth even if it causes turmoil within ourselves, right? And that's because truth hurts, guys. And it disrupts our selfish desires. See, this declaration of the Lord also institutes God's divine plan of predestination, meaning he has already predetermined by his foreknowledge upon who will come to him. And those who will come to him will have salvation. So how incredible God is that he assures us of salvation. He has cleared up any form of doubts that we may have and with what they had by telling them boldly, but yet they still choose to ignore it. And many of us still do that today. These people also had a misconception and misunderstanding that they automatically had salvation based upon their status of being a Jewish, of being, of being a Jew or having Jewish roots. So they felt like they were already in the kingdom of God just because of who they were physically. But see, Jesus instead clarifies that salvation is not through inheritance. It's not through privilege of status. It's not by location of birth or any physical attributes. It's only through faith alone in a person which is himself, Jesus, the Messiah. To think that we can come to God the Father in our own ways is simply ridiculous. And to assume we can impress or even gain favor from God through whatever thoughts, actions, behaviors we decide, that's called religion, which is man's supposed way of reaching God for salvation when it's completely the opposite. 
See, God is the one who willingly and chose to come down from heaven in human form as Jesus. And he gave us the opportunity on how we can have salvation. It is only through the work of God that this, is, that this impossible feat is even made possible. See, man does not get credit for salvation whatsoever, only through the work of God. We can cross-reference Jeremiah 31 verse 3, and it says, The Lord appeared to him from afar, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have drawn you with loving kindness. So here, Jeremiah, the writer and prophet, is describing the everlasting love that God has for Israel in chapter 31. And here, Jeremiah, Jeremiah carefully speaks of what God has spoken to him. And the words from the Lord are from his eternal divinity and his authoritative power. See, God reassures the children of Israel that his love for them is everlasting from eternity past and eternity future. There's nothing, there's nothing that can separate God's love for his children. Just as it says in Romans 8, 38 to 39. See, God does not break promises. He does not break covenants like man, like we do. And through his love, he will draw Israel to him. God doesn't force himself upon them or anyone. God's compassion is what compels them to be drawn to him. See, even God's loving kindness can lead someone to repentance. Just as it says in Romans 2 verse 4. And it says, Or do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness and tolerance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance? It's incredible. Verse 45, we're almost done, bear with me. Verse 45 and it says, It is written in the prophets and they shall all be taught of God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Jesus then quotes from Isaiah the prophet from the Hebrew scriptures, from the Old Testament. Even Jesus references from the scriptures to further provide evidence of his statements. Remember, the Lord doesn't speak out of his own manner. He always speaks from what the Lord has given to him. But most importantly, he's always speaking the words of God, especially always referencing from the Old Testament. See, he knows the people who he speaks to and that they are familiar, familiar with the Torah or the Tanakh, meaning the Old Testament, and even the writings of the prophets. So even these references brought conviction and remembrance about their upbringing and their studies. See, these individuals underestimated Jesus' knowledge and wisdom. They weren't making the connection of Jesus and the Father. They made assumptions that only increased, listen, only increased their ignorance of the truth and if we place ourselves in that same situation we will be filled with deceit from within our hearts and it's going to draw us away further from the Lord we're going to develop our own theology our own understanding and eventually we will just be caught up in our own confusion which is something that we are supposed to avoid we're supposed to adhere to his words, not add to it or subtract from it. Taking what the Lord has already given us, understanding his heart, that's the way that we are supposed to seek after the Lord. See, the word of God was intended to establish and declare God's truths, not to just his children, but to all humanity. Those who understand the truth know the responsibility and accountability of obeying and, ad and adhering to his truths. But unfortunately, even those who supposedly claim to believe God, yet they still reject his truths. And we see that here with Jesus. There are religious leaders and religious people who are completely clueless of the truth that is right in front of them. Jesus points out that we must learn the truth before we can see the truth. 
In other words, our personal expectations do not align with God's will because our personal expectations are motivated by selfish reasons and ambitions. See, everyone of Israel has been taught or has learned about God through teaching in the synagogues or from family or from those around them. There's no excuse of any Israel, Israelite not knowing anything about God, about their culture, about their history. But unfortunately, not everyone chooses to follow God or obey His words, even when they've heard the history, even when they've heard about God. It doesn't matter what kind of people group you are. Once you hear the word of God, you hear the truth, you have a decision to make to either believe, follow, and seek, or you're simply just going to reject it to seek after your own personal will. Now we can go to a few references, cross references. The first one being Hebrews 8 verse 11. And it says, And they shall not teach everyone his fellow citizen and everyone his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all we will know me, for all will know me, from the least to the greatest of them. So the author here of Hebrews is quoting from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34. And God is indicating that He will put His laws, He's going to put His ways in man's hearts and minds, and no one will have an excuse to deny the existence of God, regardless of their social status, from the poorest to the richest. All will know God. Even to this very day, unbelievers and agnostics, they know about God, but willfully choose to reject Him for their selfish and personal desires. See, we have been given such an incredible opportunity in knowing our Creator and what He has done and established for all of humanity. So why do we still choose to reject His blessings, His truths, and His promises? It's, it's incredible to me. And by doing so, all it does is shows our destructive, sinful nature when we choose to go that path of following our own ways. The next cross references that we can look at um, is Isaiah 54, verse 13, where it says, All your sons will be taught of the Lord, and the well-being of your sons will be great. And another verse as well, Jeremiah 31 to 34, um, 31 verse 34. They will not teach again, each man his neighbor and each man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin, I will remember no more. See, these references coincide with each other because it solidifies God's truths because it remains unshaken. We are the ones who create the confusion and deliver the message of God with inconsistency. Listen to me. With inconsistency. We're the ones who make that issue, who make that a problem when it comes to interpreting scripture, when it comes to ministering, preaching the word of God. We are the ones who do that, not the Lord. The Lord has already established the truth. But for whatever reason, we decide to do it our way, and that's where the problem lies. That is why God repeats himself in various ways so that we don't misunderstand, misquote, or misinterpret him. And his Holy Spirit is the one that guides, leads, and teaches us in learning his ways and learning his heart. Verse 46, as we close up on the last verse, and it says, Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. See, here Jesus asserts a truth that no man, no man or creation shares the same attributes as him. Meaning, no one has the divine nature and characteristics of Jesus in which only he, Jesus, has seen the Father because he and the Father are one. See, everything that the Father has said, done, and established 
is with the eternal presence of Jesus. In other words, Jesus has been a part and involved in everything of the Father, just as it says in John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. See, no one has seen the Father in the same manner as Jesus. But yes, the Father has revealed himself to his prophets, just as it says in Exodus 33, 18 to 23. See, only Jesus has seen and knows the full glory of God. See, Jesus also indicates that his relationship with the Father is unique and unlike any earthly relationship that we know of. See, his confirmation of seeing and knowing the Father is an assurance that his words are true because it is directly from the Father. So how much evidence, again, how much evidence do we need until we choose to believe? It does not take a rocket scientist to gather the evidence and make a sound decision. If you still choose to reject and deny the truth, then you are deliberately telling God that you don't want nothing to do with him. And that's very sad. That is heartbreaking. Yet, listen, listen to this. Yet, even in your rejection of him, he still shows love, grace, and mercy. But, but, eventually that period of grace and mercy will end. And it will be too late for that person to acknowledge their mistake and repent. That is why death is guaranteed, meaning the timing is unpredictable. That's why salvation needs to be now. Let today be the day of salvation. For those of you who are not saved, or for those of you who have been backsliding, or those of you who have been walking in a, uh, in a manner of lukewarmness, this is the time, this is a calling out to you to come before the Lord, to come back to the Lord. It's, there's just no room for games, no room for anything that would just sabotage your opportunity of reconciling with the Lord. We know that death can happen at any time for any of us. And if you have not gotten right with the Lord, this is the, t the time is now. The time is now. So moving forward, application. How can, we apply, how can we apply these verses tonight that we're studying in our lives in order to glorify the Lord? First, we must recognize and discern when our personal theologies or ideas become conflicting to the Word of God. And when that happens, we need to immediately dismiss it and go back to the Word and stick to it and adhere to it. See, we can easily deceive ourselves or misinterpret God's heart when we rely on our own understanding, but instead remain in God's ways, like it says in Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Lean on the Lord, not on yourself. See, God has already, like I said, established His ways and His truths. There is no excuse or justification to interject our personal perspectives or desires and His predetermined plans for us. He already has created everything. His plans for us, our future is already set in stone, is already done. So for us to try to interject into something that's already been completed makes no sense. And finally, as we summarize, God's words and truth trumps human understanding. We must engage in maintaining a godly perspective at all times. Man's, per man's perspective lacks godly truth and is always subjected to just personal opinions. See, when the Lord speaks, it is through His divine authority and needs no approval from anyone, anything, or of any creation at all. We, we are to listen, obey, and follow. There's no questions to that. So lastly, some study questions. Some questions you can ask yourselves in order to grow deeper in your relationship with the Lord. Simple questions. Question one, what is the bread of life? Question two, why is the living water of Christ eternal? And question three, why does man resist God? So again, you can always answer these questions during your own time, during your devotionals. 
to really just dive further in understand, understanding God's heart, God's ways, and the Word of God. So as we close, Father, again, we thank you so much for what you've done. And just be me and I will have the opportunity to study your Word in this manner. And Lord, we just pray you just continue to just speak to us daily, Lord Father God, so that we don't get carried away with our own thoughts, our own desires, and then allow the enemy to take over. Father, help us to overcome those trials. Help us overcome temptations of sin. Help us to get through our daily walks, Father God. It's not easy, Lord, but with you, we can do it. No questions asked. You've done it when you were here, and so can we. You are the example that we are to follow, Lord Jesus. Again, we thank you, Lord. And Father, again, for those who are watching tonight or those who end up watching this, this, this study tonight, Father, if there is anyone that, again, is not right with you, Father God, for those who don't have salvation, Father, I just pray that they come before you and humble themselves to receive and believe and the only begotten Son, Jesus, so they too can have eternal life. You know those hearts and you know who they are, Father God. Convict their hearts so they may know the truth and realize that they too have an opportunity of eternal life as well. Again, we thank you, Lord, and we love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. So we can all stand together as we close in one final song.
Father, for just this time of just worship and word and study, Lord, we thank you once more. We glorify you. We honor you. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for joining us this evening once again. It's such a blessing to be here with you and for you to open up your doors for us. Uh, God willing, we see you next week, same time, live stream, 7 p.m. Have a great rest of the evening. Take care and God bless.